Hi everybody, Dr. Friedman here. And it's nominally the second day of Disco Elysium, but we started off with a little bit of a digression. As those of you who follow me on Twitter know, I am one of the co-creators of the Crit Role Bib, the Critical Role Bibliography, uh, a crowdsourced project designed to uh, be a one-stop shop for as much critical role-related scholarship in all its many forms as possible. And I decided to show off what a week of Crit Role Bib being live was to my students, in part to show how with not an enormous amount of labor, um, you can design a resource that can be really useful and fruitful. Um, Crit Roll Bib, for those of you who don't know, is a simple Google Form to Google Sheet integration. Um, users can fill in fo a form that looks very much like that of Humanities Commons, which is a open access uh, kind of gateway for making available uh, scholarly material of all kinds, not just peer-reviewed published stuff, but things like conference papers, uh, master's theses, dissertations, and the like, as well as teaching materials. And so we preceded it, uh, Maria Alberto um, preceded it with about 12 entries, and it's tripled since then. Um, we're hoping uh, with a relationship with Crit Roll Stats, which is a major place that anyone who's doing uh, research into critical role would go um, because they are the keepers of an enormous amount of data about the project. Um, we're hoping that, you know, we'll, because we're linked there, will be a good gateway both for people who are looking to figure out who they need to cite and who they're in conversation with, as well as once they finished, uh, sharing with us their work. I compared this to a much longer uh, digital project that I've been working on for as long as I've been at Auburn, this is my 13th year, um, recovering, encoding, and dealing with manuscript fiction from the age of print, 16, or 1740 to 18, 1900. And we talked about how you scope a project, how you scale a project, um, how you make sure a project is achievable but also sustainable over time, and the many things that any particular project can't capture. Um, in our case, Crit Roll Bib is going to be separate from another project um, tentatively called Crit Roll Sources, which um, will attempt to capture more information from places like Twitter um, and the like. Um, and different kinds of sources, sources that are going to need more care and feeding and maintaining. Um, and this is tied to um, a thread of discussion that Tressie McMillan Cottom had with her students, um, which she tweeted about um, yesterday. I'll include that link. Um, thinking about um, the ways that we divest in institutional infrastructure because of the dream of digital infrastructures that we don't think about the kind of inherent biases, the amount of maintaining that they need, um, who's doing that maintaining, who's empowered to do that kind of maintaining, um, and, and beyond. So that was about a half an hour of class today um, because it's the cutting edge of TTRPG research and also a little bit of an explainer of how I connect the work I do as an 18th centuryist with this work that I do as a you know scholar of role-playing games and actual games, uh, actual play. Um, I've, I've made those connections before, I've made those connections in videos like this before, but it never hurts to reinforce. We closed our, our discussion with uh, of, um, of Disco Elysium by further taking a look at uh, gameplay and how the character that is our kind of focalizing character is portrayed. So we got to that moment of the kind of mirror, looking in the mirror and making interpretive choices about um, who, who we are, um, you know, what ideas do we have about ourselves, that sort of thing. Um, it was a good discussion. I pulled some really useful thoughts um, out of Perusal um, for uh, organizing our thoughts today. 
And then I spent the last about 10 minutes talking to students in, at a kind of meta pedagogical level. If I was teaching this again, if I get to teach this course again, would we include um, Disco Elysium and in what format? Um, as you know from the previous video, it's not required that um, we that students play the game. All, two students ended up playing the game. Um, one student reports that they probably will um, this weekend. Um, the rest watched actual play. And so I floated a couple of other ideas. Um, first of all, the price of the game may go down, which may change the calculus that we make. It's currently about $40 US. But I floated the idea of instead of having us watch the actual play across two days and discuss both of the days, but instead devoting 75 minutes to actually playing all together, um, kind of using, as one student said, we could just use Mentimeter, which we use already to kind of make polls. Um, and people could, you know, very quickly take three seconds to make the decision. We would discuss it, um, you know, we would not do as much close reading, but we'd experience more of the game and we would experience it together. So that's a possibility that my students have thrown up that is uh, potentially the way that I might teach this in the future. The other thing that I planted the seed about, and I think we're going to talk about more at the end of the semester when we talk about, really talk about, um, you know, the transformation of this course because I'm hoping by then it actually will be meaningful um, in terms of like, what is the course number of the next version of this course, that kind of thing. Um, fingers crossed. Um, but uh, I also floated the idea, one that we couldn't execute this semester, but we might be able to execute with planning next time, the idea of outside of class, setting a designated time on Discord to play along outside of class to free up time for discussion in class. So we'll find out. Um, but that's uh, all it is for Thursday. And, you know, I think that uh, I will teach this again. I think it is very tightly connected to role playing games in terms of um, the kind of visualization of dice mechanics and, and whatnot. Uh, I might introduce it earlier in the semester. Obviously, this was a kind of add-on based on student interest, but I think it might be worth um, touching on even earlier in the process. Um, we'll see. I'm going to play around with it. This weekend, in order to prep for class, I'm running my first game of Alice is Missing with my friends on Discord. So fingers crossed. And that's what we'll be talking about next week. How to run five sessions of Alice is Missing in two 75-minute classes simultaneously. Have a great weekend. It's Thursday.